If money or space was no object, what reptiles would you keep? I think all of us have a dream reptile list and here are my top five dream reptiles I would keep if there were no reservations. My name's Adam, this is Diamond. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. Part of the reason that a lot of us watch certain YouTube channels is so we can oogle over the things that we don't have. I mean, if I had all the money in the world, then I would definitely have a Camp Kennan-esque property with rhino iguanas and water monitors and all that stuff. And the way he takes care of them is so inspiring. So what if you could have anything that you want? Well, let's just start off with my number five reptile that I would have if there were no limitations. Number five. Fiji banded iguanas. Okay, so this one's gonna be a little bit different because I can have them and you probably can't. Just because most of my audience is in the US, so just statistically, you're probably not able to keep them because they are illegal to have in the US. All of them that are in the US are at zoos that are legal, right? All the legal ones are at zoos. So you can go look at one and you can go handle one probably, but um, you can't keep one in your personal collection. They're endangered in Fiji. They're like the crown jewel of Fiji. They are in Canada. They are in the UK, but there's none in private collections that I know of legally in the US. Now, why would you want one? Well, look at it. First of all, uh, these things are amazing. I was very lucky. I went to the Skull Store in Toronto last weekend with Dave Kaufman. We get to mess around with these guys and it was so much fun. Imagine a much smaller green iguana that is much more brilliantly colored, much more beautiful and less consequences. Sure, they have a long tail, so they could whip you if you wanted, right? If they wanted to, and they could bite you, but an animal that's gonna get to like two feet is gonna be a lot less cantankerous or a lot less of an issue, I should say, than an animal that could get to four or five feet. Because green iguanas, if they take a chunk out of you or they tail whip you, it could be a more serious injury that needs medical attention. Look, just a flesh wound. With a Fiji, not so much. And Fijis are tameable. A lot of people will tame these down pretty easily, right? Not the easiest thing. It's not a bearded dragon or leopard gecko, but still not the most difficult thing in the world to actually take care of and to tame down so that they could just sit on your shoulder with diamond. Do I have one? No. Do I want one? Yes, absolutely. Would that be a co-host with diamond and you'd see it all the time if I had one? Yes. Will I get one? I don't know. Hit subscribe. Find out. All right, let's depart from the illegal herbivores that like to spend time in the trees and go to a snake that likes to spend time in the trees. Rhino rat snakes. Oh boy. Okay, so I remember in 2017, we had this reptile shop that opened up in my hometown. I walked into it on opening day and I saw these things and I couldn't even believe what I was looking at. I still, I don't know if my jaw has ever been picked up off the floor. They were vibrant green, although they do come in blue. I mean, look at this one that I saw at the CRBE last weekend. Whew, whoa doggy, this thing is crazy. But most of the time, they are a brilliant green. They start off like a gray, steel gray type color, and then as they shed and grow, they become green. Now, why are they called a rhino rat snake? Well, because they look like unicorns, like long spaghetti unicorns. These things are not the biggest things in the world, like four-ish feet, but that horn is what really separates them. Asian rat snakes in general, being snakes, rat snakes from Asia, are almost all really, really cool. Not that the North American ones aren't, but I just think that these are separated because of their color and because of the fact that they have that appendage, or it's actually just a bunch of scales on their nose. That to me is just like the coolest thing. Not only that, but they're arboreal and they like to spend a lot of time near water. So a big paludarium setup, you could even have fish in there or whatever, would be really cool too. The reptile store that I go to that has these guys, that's what they have theirs in. It's a paludarium. So it's gonna be climbing around in the trees and it has a water area that I've seen them actually use before. So something that is very unique in that if you wanted a glass box that basically is an art project with a beautiful snake inside of it and a beautiful snake that is tolerant to handling and very smart, you can't beat a rhino rat snake. Now they're not even that unaffordable. Here in Canada, you can buy them for, you know, 600 bucks. Sure, the blue ones are gonna be like two grand, but who cares? Ooh, you're hard showing off. I mean, it's a one-time purchase. Not that it's like, oh, who cares about money? I just mean it's not, 
an animal that's going to be 10 grand or it's not a bull and python is what I'm trying to say here. It's something that is very manageable. Most people can handle the size. They eat well once they're on food, which the breeder who sells it to you is going to get them on food anyway. Generally, they don't go off once they're on. These are kind of one of the more perfect snakes if you're looking for something very unique that your friends probably do not have. Just quickly before we move on, I want to say thanks to Into the AM for sponsoring today's video. I love this clothing brand. Every time I wear this shirt specifically, or all of the graphic tees that they've sent me, hey man, where did you get that? And right now, if you want, these are, by the way, the most comfortable, they fit good, like they make your arms look bigger if you got pencil arms like me, you know? I love this, this company, I love all the styles, there are so many to choose from, and right now, if you use the link below, you can get three of these graphic tees for 54 bucks. 54 bucks for three of these graphic tees, which are the most comfortable, they fit the best, and they have the coolest designs. Into the AM, thank you so much for sending these shirts. Thanks for sponsoring today's episode. There's a link below, like, you wanna look cool too, right? Let's get back to the list. Number three, lace monitors. Now, you've probably seen lace monitors on other channels, right? I got to go to Barchuk's place, the Reptarium, a few months ago, or I guess, holy cow, it's almost been a year. Anyway, and I got to play with Beetlejuice, who is a Bell's Phase lace monitor. So, Bell's Phase, they're, it's, I guess it's kind of like a morph, but they're, they're naturally occurring in the wild, which is in Australia, by the way. They are the second largest lizard in Australia after Parenti's monitors, which could have been on the list too, because Parenti's monitors look in like look at this thing. It's freaking insane. But I just think Bell's phase are a little bit easier to come by. To find a Parenti, I mean good luck. And even if you can find it, I hope you've won several lotteries in your lifetime to be to be able to afford it. Not that Bell's phase aren't expensive, they are, but just they're a little bit more realistic. Although I'm doing a dream reptiles list that's supposed to be no limits. Am I just foreshadowing that I'm eventually going to have all these animals and you can see them all if you hit subscribe and watch this channel long enough? Yes, that's what I'm doing. Now, this is an interesting animal because they spend a lot of the time on the ground and in the trees. They've got very strong claws. Like, I got cut up when I was playing with Beetlejuice. So they can climb up trees like it's nobody's business, but they feel very comfortable on the ground too. Now, most of their diet in the wild is going to be carrion. So, dead things. So they're gonna stumble upon an animal that's died. They're kind of like a scaly vulture, let's just say that. So because they're so big, they don't really have a lot of natural predators, but they still do exhibit behavior that if you were a predator, you'll get like the same sort of idea. They'll, you'll get tail whipped and the jaws are pretty powerful, but you can tame them down. They're not the most tameable thing in the world, but it doesn't mean that you can't tame them. You definitely, certainly, most certainly, definitely can. What am I trying to say here? I want one so bad, just so. But the thing is, you need a huge enclosure. These things are gonna get, you know, five-ish feet, something like that. Sometimes, some of them have been bigger than six feet, and you're gonna need space for it to climb, and you're gonna need space on the ground. So you're gonna need a really big enclosure. I just don't have room for one. It'd be really cool to have, and I think that if you have an outdoor space, if you live in Texas, you know, California, Florida, wherever it's legal too, I don't know the laws about these places, but it has the right climate for most of the year for them to be outside, that would probably be best, and then have an indoor enclosure for them to spend the remainder of the time when it gets too cold. But again, I live in Canada, it's now the end of September. Holy cow. Where does time go, dude? Anyway, I'm taking the tortoises in likely today, so that means that they were only outside for about four and a half months. Having a big monitor species that would like to be outside just doesn't work for the climate that I live in. Number two, Amazon Basin Emerald Tree Boas. It's a little bit of a mouthful, but look at them. These things are wild. Now, Amazon Basins are like, okay, so Emerald Tree Boas are from South America, and there are the Northerns, and then there are the Amazon basins, which are at the basin of the Amazon, which is why they're called that. Now, these guys are a little bit bigger, seven to nine feet sometimes, and their dorsal patterning, the white dorsal, is just more prominent, it's more beautiful, it's more showy. This is why people really want them. Now, of course, they do have the biggest teeth of any non-venomous snake, so you wouldn't want to get bit by one, and emerald tree boas are not known for being the most uh, playful, let's just say. I'm a slither little snake and snake. Snakes in the world, but... Amazon basins are known for being a little bit less cantankerous and a little bit more handleable. Is it because of the size? Who knows? 
But I just think that an animal that looks like this, which is basically an art project in itself, in a six by six by three foot enclosure, maybe even bigger, that's fully planted, would be, I mean, that's a showstopper. Someone would walk into your house, even if they don't like snakes and their jaw would be, you know, they have to pick it up off the floor. Further, because they're so big, they're not gonna look to prey on frogs. And because they're from the same area as a lot of dart frogs, wouldn't it be cool to co have them with dart frogs on the ground? Because they're not gonna try to eat them. It's not, obviously, there's a lot of things for multi-species cohab. There's a video right here, so just don't do it all willy-nilly. But I just think it'd be cool for an animal that's gonna sit mostly coiled up and only move around at night. And then during the day, you can have all these frogs calling and kind of jumping around. Like, it doesn't really get much better than that. But Amazon basins are approaching the same price as like, they're just so wildly expensive. I'll put a screenshot here. If I can find any on Morph Market, they are not cheap. They're not affordable by any standard whatsoever. So it's something that it would almost be silly goose stuff not to get two of them and try to breed them to recoup your money. Unless really all you wanted was a display piece. But also in Canada where I live, trying to find these things is like best of luck. So definitely it's something that I'm interested in. It just right now, it doesn't make sense. I don't have the space and I don't really want to spend tens of thousand dollars on a breeding project. Not today, but one day. And my number one dream reptile, kind of the opposite of number five, rhino iguanas. The opposite because it has iguana in the name, it's not arboreal, it's terrestrial, it's not colorful, and also it's illegal in Canada, sort of. You can't bring them in and there's none here. So there's a lot in the US, right? These are from the island of Española, Hispaniola. Man, I can't pronounce anything. Dominican Republic and Haiti. That island, that's where they're from. They're endangered, they're beautiful, they have horns. And honestly, a rock iguana would be fine too, like a Cuban rock iguana. I just want a big terrestrial iguana that's going to be very placid, that's going to be an herbivore, and just wants to hang out on my lap. That's what I want, that's what I want. I got to hang out with some of these guys at Bar Chuck's place and it only secured the fact that I love them and I need them in my life. Unfortunately, in Canada, there just aren't any available. I don't know where I'd look. I'm sure there are some, but I've never seen them. And even if I could find them, the price would just be way up there. So in the States, it's different. You know, later on down the line, when I have that opportunity, I'll definitely own one and I'll be living in a place where it's warm enough, hopefully, to keep them outside, like you see in Florida, California, uh, Texas, places like that. But I just think that they're amazing. Like, it's like a scaled puppy dog, right? Now, I'm not complaining because I already have a tegu, and tegus are freaking amazing, but the dog, the mailman must be here. But it's just different. Having an animal like this is just different. There's really nothing like it. So rhino iguanas and Cuban rock iguanas are number one on my bucket list dream reptiles. What are your dream reptiles? Let me know in the comments section. I want to see your list. Please leave it down there. And while you're down there, if you don't mind, hit like. If you like the video, hit subscribe. It really helps this channel. And when I say that I'm going to get all these animals, I'm going to. Hit subscribe. Like, it's going to happen. You're going to see it on the channel if you watch long enough. And as always, a special thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys get discounts on the merch. You guys get extra videos. You get extra vlogs starting soon. You know about the trip that we're going on that nobody else does. It's kind of a secret until today or whenever we decide to release it. Like literally later this month, we're going to this place. Anyway, for as low as a dollar a month, you can be part of that. That's it. Because I do videos on Mondays and Thursdays, that means I'll see you in the next one.